Hi everyone, today I want to show you a really useful utility called DRENV. And make sure to stick till the end when I will show you how to use the tool to avoid collisions in kubeconfig management. So let's start. DRENV is an environment variable manager. What it does in a nutshell, it allows you to load and unload variables as you enter and leave a folder. That's the key uh, task that DRENV, uh, DRENV can do. Uh, the definition from the man page is that DRENV is an environmental variable manager for your shell. It knows how to hook into bash, Z shell, fish, and some other shell and load and unload environmental variables. So what it does for us, it can help us manage environmental variables per directory, which is really useful if you deal with various projects that require different settings, versions of software. Um, you know, in our case, as I show it towards the end, um, different cube configs and so on. It supports Bash, Z shell, Fish, and I think T shell. Um, it keeps your global profile clean. You don't need to overload your um, Z shell RC or bash RC with various functions and aliases. You can just localize all this uh, into a cer certain folder. And what it translates to, it translates to the fact that it can enable project specific configuration. Now, I want to put one, one caveat here. This is one way of doing it. Um, another very interesting um, alternative to project-specific configuration with DRENV would be, for example, dockerizing your workflow. But that's a different story and probably material for another video. So how does DRENV work? Um, before every prompt is shown on the screen, DRENV checks for existence of NVRC file in the current or parent directories. And if the file exists, it loads it into a bash subshell and exports all the variables captured by the program. So let's go by it step by step. When you have DRENV installed and set up and you enter a folder where inverse C file is located, it will load all the variables exported there and will also remove all the variables that you specifically unset with the, with the keyword unset. So let's see a sample and for C file. This is a super simple one. It has just one variable test var with a hello DRENV value. Nothing crazy here. Okay. So you might think, hey, whenever I get into a folder, stuff gets loaded. That's a potential security issue. And that's true. That's why DRENV has a feature that enables us to remedy it. Before we talk about it, let's briefly mention how to install it. It's really simple. You use Brew or any other package manager, and then you have to hook it uh, to your shell configuration file. In my case, I'm using Zshell, so that's a simple eval statement. And then you source file and you're ready to go. So the security feature I mentioned earlier, it's called DRENV allow. We have to explicitly allow for loading the uh, NVRC file. Uh, let's see a quick demo how it works in practice. So in this demo, first we are in the test DRENV directory and there is an NVRC file with the following content. We've seen this file earlier. So we are in the test DRENV um, folder and then we have this file. However, when we evaluate our DRENV, that's just a way of evaluating for the script. You don't have to do this command when you run it um, without the script. Then you will see that we have an error. We have a full path here and says, this NVRC is blocked, run there and allow to approve its content. So we've seen it. The content is just test var, hello DRENV, nothing scary. We are okay to allow it. So what we can do, let's first see that we cannot see the variable. If we uh, output the variable content to the terminal, it will be empty because it's not loaded. Let's allow. Once we allow and evaluate the DRENV again, you will see different output. DRENV says, okay, I'm loading this NVRC file with the content up here. And it's 
contains only one variable. So I'm exporting this variable test var. And now, if everything is OK, we should be able to output the content of the variable to the screen. And we can successfully do it. So very simple security mechanism that prevents you from auto-loading potentially harmful content. All right, Dear Env has a little bit more to offer than just this. It has a quite powerful standard lib um, script. Uh, here I handpicked just a few functions that Dear Env offers. You can do, for example, path add, which is a safer path uh, because it uh, prevents you from making a mistake where you override the whole path. Uh, you have a layout. Uh, layout is quite interesting feature. It essentially loads virtual environments for various um, programming environments. It has a dot, dot env um, overlay. Um, dot env is another way of managing environmental variables, and dear env can have a pass through to it, so you can load your dot env file as well with environmental variables. So you don't need to use two programs. Finally, you can uh, use external dependencies. This can be any programming language or any program. So you can say use Go and then supply Go version so that within the folder that you're currently in, you will have a different Go version loaded um, rather than in other folders, which is super useful. Uh, watch file is also another one that I use quite frequently. Um, whenever you want to refresh environmental variables or kind of resource them, uh, as a file change, maybe you have a configuration file that needs to read them, then you can trigger um, DRAN for reload on file watch. So just quite a few um, practical use cases. As I mentioned, you can use DRAN to automatically load Python virtual environments. And this is similar to activating and deactivating VENV. It does it behind the scenes by creating a a hidden dir and folder and then managing virtual environments there. Uh, you can use um, dir env to load API keys and secrets since they are all on your machine. Uh, that's fine. And then you can just uh, have all the secrets available, let's say for open OpenAI or other tools. Uh, as mentioned earlier, you can use it to have a project specific tools versions. You can manage AWS profiles or Azure subscriptions, uh, quite a few interesting use cases. All right, so as I promised, uh, now we can look at a real world example that I use with kubeconfig. And this example is useful for managing separate kubeconfigs. So let me give you a little bit more context. So when you work with multiple Kubernetes clusters, you typically have to juggle various context. So you have to go and switch from prod cluster to test to staging. Maybe you have clusters that uh, you work for um, uh, different uh, customers. And that's dangerous because you can often, uh, you know, in a heat of a moment, you have an outage or something's happening and you are executing, let's say, kubectl uh, delete namespace against a wrong cluster. So that's potentially disastrous. So I've created this super simple script that essentially what it does, it uses dir env behind the hood to generate um, separate cube config. Let me open the file. Uh, so first of all, it asks you to provide the name of the folder. So you're kind of creating a new folder with this script. It creates a new folder. It creates within this folder config file, and then it creates an nvrc with the content of kubeconfig equals dot slash config. So it points your kubeconfig variable to the newly created config file. And then when you load your cluster, you can actually write, um, you know, typically let's say you have a GKE cluster or AWS or Azure, they will uh, append um, the configuration of a cluster that you work with to a current kubeconfig. And if the kubeconfig variable points to a different file, they will simply write to this file. So thus you end up with a completely separate uh, kubeconfigs. And uh, at the end, when you create it, we are running dir env allow, remember the security mechanism. And essentially you have a folder that has a dedicated kubeconfig file that you can use 
or whatever you want. And you can run their kubectl command and you know maybe uh, write to this config file, uh, and then you have kind of a completely separate kubeconfig variable. Uh, when you leave the folder, uh, then the variable resets and it might point to a different um, nvrc if you have it, or it might point to your global kubeconfig, like in my case. So let's see how it looks uh, in practice. We can run a quick demo. So we have created my cluster folder, and there's an nvrc file. And before we evaluate this with dir env, so before we load the nvrc file, you can see that indeed um, the kubeconfig variable right now points to my global kubeconfig in my home directory dot kubeconfig. The show config is simply a function that wraps the echo command. All right, now we have evaluated uh, the dir env. You see that this familiar message we've loaded mycluster.nvrc and we have exported one variable kubecon. So now when we uh, evaluate um, the kubeconfig again, it should actually show a different value. So let's give it a try. So kubeconfig and indeed here we had my global kubeconfig and here we have a variable pointing to my local config file. So that's very useful. I use it all the time, uh, and I have a, a integrated workflow with uh, with uh, my terminal and creating kube configs like that. And then I will just add some more files to it and kind of do a you know cluster specific um, project almost. So let's wrap things up. Um, what we've learned so far, we've explored dir env. It has really cool features. We understood the concept of DRENV. It's used to manage environmental variables per directory. Um, and this can allow you to keep your global system clean. Uh, it automatically loads and unloads variables uh, depending on the navigation, whether you navigate to or away from a directory. It has a very simple security feature that allows you to control which NVRC files you want to load and which not. We took a quick tour um, around the stdlib functions and seen some of them. There are more to explore uh, in, the, in the documentation. You can uh, see man pages for dear env and, and read about it. Uh, we talked a little bit about practical use cases. Uh, I talked about Python environments and I showed you a quick demo with separating Kubernetes kubecon. And then we've seen the demo. So I hope you uh, see the, the usefulness and uh, power of this tool. I've integrated it with my workflow for quite a few years now, and I'm really happy. Uh, I have quite a few scripts. I scripted around it, and definitely a very useful tool. All right, uh, that's it. I hope you enjoy it. Uh, let me know in comments below if you would like to see something similar or uh, you would like me to expand on different topics. Otherwise, thanks for watching and see you in the next video.